myself up here to, to meet you. And thank you very much for the article, final article for well, my magazine. Well, I was pleased to do it. Why don't you come in and we'll sit down here and I think yeah, some photographers are coming in to get I some know. pictures of you? this. I don't know. I pressed it there. <laughs> it would be possible. Well, I'll thank you once more. Thank you. And uh, I have crossed the ocean. And uh, may I ask maybe one question? Short moments. All right. Uh, Mr. President, you are very popular huh, with the Soviet people. Well, I was very surprised by their warm welcome when I was there. Especially, especially after the visit and after your summit with uh, Secretary General Gerva Show. What is your opinion and appreciation of the present state of affairs with the Soviet Union? Well, I think I sensed among the people uh, uh, an awareness and a great appreciation of uh, <coughs> the proposals for Glasnost and Perestroika. I realized that. Uh, as in any government, he has some opposition within the government uh, there. But uh, I would have to say from just what contact I was able to have that the people seem to be very much in support of that. So I hope they have their way. What is your idea in practical uh, terms what the, uh, what the next steps are possible in the development of our elections? in the nearest future? Well, in our first meeting, I said to the Secretary General that, uh, and I was quoting someone else, not my original words, but that uh, in the talking of armament, uh, we don't mistrust each other because we're armed. We're armed because we mistrust each other. And therefore, before we start reducing arms, we should start trying to reduce the causes of the mistrust. The Soviet people uh, do know well these your words. <laughs> what is the first? What is the second? Well, so I think if we continue trying to remove those things, and that, of course, is going to depend more on deeds than words. Where's the the president has another meeting, but we're glad you could. Yeah. How are you? How are you? Good to see you. My family yeah, from my commission. Yeah, members. Yeah. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Good 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 to see you. John Gerardo from the Secretary of State. Well, Jim Taylor, the same. Yes. Nice to see you, sir. Hello, David Crawford, Director of the Commission. Hi. Laura Dennis, Deputy Director. John Clendon, Bell South Corporation. Atlanta, New York City. Morley Ashton, Paul Princeton University. Gary Becker, the University of Chicago. Good to see you. Good morning, Gloria Portella. Nice to see you. Al Shanko, the Market Federation of Teachers. Nice to see you again. See you again. When we walk at one time, we met. Yes, we did. Dick Schubert is the American. That was just making fun of the way to jump over. I'm always worried that Teddy will step on me with that horse. Well, I guess we'll have to remain silent here at Small Talk for a minute before we get underway because the photographers are going to come in and get some pictures. Get on this side. <laughs> Didn't you also say that you should always be on the uh, right?
right-hand side because when you look at a picture, people read left to right. So oh, if you're on the right, is well, that, that was, another one of yours? That was, well, that was one of my first <laughs> acting lessons in Hollywood when I got there. And sometimes at a social gathering or something, there would be a group of picture celebrities and the camera would line them up. And everybody kind of tries to get in the middle except one. And uh, he was a great star and he would always maneuver clear over there to the other end of the line. And I couldn't resist, and I asked him one day, I said, why, why do you do that? You're a big star and so forth. He says, nobody reads the entire caption. But they all read beginning from left to right. <laughs> some time problems, but in 1983, the Secretary of Education released a landmark report on the state of American education prepared by my Commission on Excellence in Education, and that report identified a rising tide of mediocrity that was affecting our students. And uh, as those students joined the workforce, this mediocrity endangered our competitiveness, of course. And now you, as members of the Commission on Workforce Quality, are facing the task of identifying ways to overcome these problems and assure a quality workforce. And that means achieving a well-trained and retrained workforce. And it means developing a substantive and durable action plan to prepare our workers for the demands of the future. Your advice to the Secretary of Labor is critically important to this. Our partnership will contribute to the greatest investment we can make in our nation, and that is an investment in our human capital. So I'm glad to talk with you today about your goals and the work you face, and that's enough for me, Ann. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to thank you for the time you're giving us. This is the first meeting. There'll be meeting this afternoon from about 1 o'clock till 4 o'clock. A couple of members were not able to be here because of schedule, but I am truly grateful. It does follow on so much of the work that we've started, I think, in recent years, uh, not just in the administration, but this is a bipartisan effort because the problems are bipartisan. We have found skill shortages and chronic unemployment, need for flexibility in the workplace, and uh, defining the problem, it appears, has been the easy job. <clears throat> but not enough people have solutions. And so this commission, we hope, will spend a year developing some solutions. And uh, we're off to a good start, not only in our meeting with you, but Business Week, dated today, it actually came out last week, but it's dated September 19th. The cover story is on human capital, decline of American workforce. Mm -hmm. In here, there are five members of our commission quoted, and I think that is a testimony to uh, the fact that we've been able to bring together uh, all good people, 20 members, five of whom Business Week thought highly of to quote and seek opinion on on this problem. And so we're pleased that the timing is such that this issue will be more popularized, if you will, more and more people understanding that we as a nation have got to work to improving our workforce and its literacy, its education, and its training and retraining. There are <clears throat> really uh, seven uh, main points for the Commission's charter, but we've been able to narrow them down to three, and I thought I might share them with you. Uh, one of the first uh, missions of this Commission is to talk about and look at how we might restructure and structure both private and public job training and education, and how to retain and then relocate displaced workers. Secondly, how can we keep educators and those responsible for training and retraining uh, informed on a regular and continuous basis of the changes in the workplace? Uh, and the uh, fact that we had uh, earlier this summer, we talked to you about the uh, qual Building a Quality Workforce Symposium that Secretary Verity, Secretary Bennett and I ran. Al Shanker was one of the people who participated in that. It was business, government, educators, school superintendents, etc. Worked with the NAB, the National Alliance of Business, and it was all day, and I think showed that these groups working together, informing one another, and participating can make uh, great inroads into the communities for us uh, in terms of human resource and human capital needs. Also, we want the Commission to look at financing um, private investments in human capital, and then also uh, how can job placement agencies that are at the uh, state and local level and employer policies encourage more flexibility flexibility and the sort of efficiency that's going to be needed in the labor market in order to adjust to the changes that technology, global competitiveness, etc., are going to be bringing about. They have an uh, ambitious schedule for a year. There's a lot of research that's already been done, but clearly more is needed. Um, but I was struck with the fact that Commission has as its Latin uh, 
derivative, if you will, the meaning to entrust. And I thought that this was an appropriate when we're talking about human resources, we're talking about the people of our country, we're entrusting this commission with a great deal of hope and uh, responsibility. Uh, the report will be due to Labor Day of next year, and uh, we'll all benefit, I think, from this. I would like now to turn to Dick Schubert. Dick has uh, been kind enough to chair this, and it's significant today, particularly because as, chair as uh, president of the Red Cross and chairing this first commission meeting, you can appreciate he has been very, very busy with Hurricane Gilbert. So I'm most appreciative that he's able to carry out his duties for us today. Dick. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Mr. President, I had the privilege and responsibility to be involved in these kinds of problems in government. I was involved in the Labor Department for five years back in the early 70s and then uh, in the steel industry for a total of about 16 years and now the Red Cross. And I'm absolutely satisfied that these are critical problems that we're going to be dealing with. And I think that we've got a fine commission, we have a super staff, the Secretary has made this a, a first commitment uh, on her part, and I just want to assure you that in the metaphor of this week or so, we're going to give it our best shot. And just as that report that you refer to in your remarks on education was a gold report. It was very readable. It had very sound, practical recommendations. That's our commitment. We want our document to be readable and read, and we want as practical, down-to-earth uh, recommendations for public policymakers and for the private sector as we can. And we're going to do that, Mr. President, and try to make everyone who's been involved in getting us started proud of the effort. Well, I'm most pleased to hear that, and, and I have the greatest confidence in the world in all of you just for the simple fact that you're from the private sector. Uh, i just give you a couple of sets of figures to illustrate what the difference can be. I discovered many years ago a, a job training program, government, government run, and managed and all, that trained supposedly 5,000 workers in less than a year at a cost of $50,000 per trainee. And then the one comparison that I have is that program subsequently that we've had of, of a job partnership with the private sector in training in which 70% of the, of the people have obtained jobs and it certainly didn't cost any $250 million or 5,000 employees as the other one did. And we know the, the great need <coughs> right now with all the gain in jobs and everything. I've gotten in the habit uh, on Sunday of counting the pages in the Help Wanted ads, of Help Wanted ads in the Washington Post. Sunday's the day when that's where they're, where, where they're there and uh, how we even talk of having an unemployment problem when this yesterday there were 70 full pages of help wanted ads here in this Washington paper and I know when I've been in, on a weekend in other <coughs> cities I've gone out of the way to look at their paper and see the same it's the same all over now that doesn't mean that there is a lack of people that has to mean but there are a lack of people trained for Skills those, yes, what those employers are, are looking for. And it's been running about that much uh, oh, for the last last year or two that I've been, that's a new hobby of mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that in our Workforce 2000 report, which Pat certainly was involved in and others, uh, your work, um, we can offer a job, we think, by the year 2000 to everyone who wants one if they're prepared. And that's why we have from Al Shanker in education through many of the people here at Delton Training Programs, what the role is if government and business and uh, educators have to work together to sort of pull us out of this mess we're in, you might say. Um, I'm I getting a signal that I'm due someplace else. <laughs> <laughs> I have to find that fellow that keeps telling me <laughs> what I'm going to do every 15 minutes. One of these days. Thank you so much. Mr. Well, this is a good to meet all of you. Thank you all for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.